unbeknownst to me was when I did finally um, accept the challenge. I was like, ah, screw it. Why not? It, it, it's fantastic fest. It, come on, we gotta have fun. I gotta, yeah. you know, I gotta, I gotta have fun. And uh, two unfortunate factors occurred. One was that they programmed the debates for the, for for ninety minutes after my premiere. <laughs> we already have a lot of adrenaline going to begin with. We were both in there. Uh, but I did not expect that I was going to be in a fucking boxing ring right after my premiere. Not many filmmakers can boast that, and not many filmmakers would like to boast that. Um, but then, uh, I had I had been working out for about four weeks, so I dropped twenty pounds in a month. It was, wow, it was awesome. Like I, I was like, yeah, Whoa. like my wife's like, I might have sex with you again. This is cool. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, like you know, I'm out there. I got my my Jack Burton shirt on and everything. I'm just like, it's all the reflexes. I got this. You know, like at least I, my whole goal with that was I just didn't want to get knocked out. Like yeah. I just did not want to get face planted, and that was it. So if I could hold my own and not fall, I, I can take a punch. As long as I don't go, I, I'm okay. So we go up there and I get my intro and I'm doing my ultimate warrior and everything. And then the uh, announcer says, weighing in at 260 pounds. And I went, he's 60 pounds heavier than me. I am in big, big trouble. <laughs> and he came out and that boy can hit. <laughs> like, I know we were having fun and everything, but that guy can hit. He can't cut a movie for shit, but boy, oh boy, like, no, he's actually an amazing editor. I actually tried to get him on Everly, and it was a union thing, but Josh is one of the, one of the nicest guys. For, for a dude who looks like a white supremacist, one of the nicest guys. <laughs> of the nicest guys. You know, he's great. And you're here, you're here. After yeah. your fight, after your Sorry, world you premiere? Mean, no, that's awesome. The whole time, like, I, this is what happens at Fantastic Fest. <laughs> You, you put a bunch of, you know, uh, film-loving nerds together. We just start rambling on, and next thing you know, it's three in the morning, and we're going, were we supposed to do an interview? Yeah, are we supposed to talk about Everly, one of so. the best action movies in a while? Oh, thank you, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I loved it. Do I just have to start, like, heavy petting you now? Or? I say yes to everything. That's what I tell my wife. That's what I tell everybody. Just say wow. yes. <laughs> The fanta this Fantastic Fest is young yet. Yes. Um, so, Everly, talk to me about it. What sparked that idea? Was it written for specifically for Selma Hayek? Did, how much fun did you have on set? Give uh, me a spiel. All right. Uh, let's see. First, first question. Uh, how did this come about? It was, um, I, I just, I always wanted to make, I just wanted to make a, a, like kind of an action thriller, a, a European action thriller, kind of akin to uh, like, the, 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 if you could take the last 10 minutes of The Professional and stretch it out over 90 minutes, you know, or anything like Luc Besson did. Um, but also, I love Asian cinema and Easterns as well, and, you know, Kinji Fukusaku and Beat Takeshi and Takashi Miike. Like, I, the, the, it's those kind of provocateurs or like Paul Verhoeven, where you're taking Western tropes and you're just filtering it through a different lens. You're just trying to do something a little bit different, you know? And I know everybody says that. We're trying to do something different. Uh, that's my bad Josh Ethier impression. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, it, it, it happens all the time where someone's like, we're doing something different with this one. Well, what's different? Well, this time we have Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan. It's crazy, right? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's... It's, it's so easy to say that you're trying to do something different, but I was like, well, if I'm gonna do it, I have to go to the mat to do that. And by giving myself a rule, by saying like, okay, we're stuck in this room. What's something that Rio Bravo or um, Assault on Precinct 13 didn't do in those movies? And one of the things that they didn't do, uh, or well, actually that they did, that I, I it shouldn't say is bad, but it would, it would have been different than what I would have done, was they did cut outside. You know, they did show you know, the spooky dudes, like in the Salt and Precinct 13, all the creepy dudes who just kind of stand there in John Carpenter movies when you go, Pew! you know, like, but they cut away, you know. So the filmmakers are giving the audience a release, you know, a moment where they can breathe a little bit because they know that they're not trapped in that room with those people at that time. For here, I was like, I would love to put the audience in that room with her 
and not let them out. Don't give them that, that reprieve. Don't let them breathe. Yeah, it was almost like when I was watching it, I started to say like, oh man, this is like Kill Bill on speed in one room. Like it was just Soul. badass. It's like, it's like <laughs> you came into uh, one of the cool karaoke rooms at the, uh, the highball and did the entire Kill Bill 1 and 2 soundtrack and you were stuck in here until it finished. Yeah. So that's essentially what Everly is. Yes. And, and Oh, and you're also with a bunch of crackheads. And complete with a excellent Christmas soundtrack with Bear McCrary, who's one of my favorites. He is he's he's my hero. He's my uh, he's my musical muse. I love you, Bear. When, when you when you were working with him, did you tell him to do a live version of Battlestar Galactica theme? <laughs> I, I always do that. When I walk into his house, I'm just like, but it done, but it done, done, done. Like he, like. What was great about this, partially, uh, the re- partially the reason why Tycho is named Tycho is because I needed to convince Bear to do the movie. Well, I didn't really need to. Like, he's one of the first people that's ever seen the script. Um, but I thought, like, ooh, if I name a character Tycho, I'll get Tycho drums in the movie. <laughs> it would be weird if it, like, Tycho comes in and you hear, like, Pew! starts going into like you know the guest score or something yeah. like that. It's like, no, 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 no. This, this, need, this guy needs you know, percussion gravitas, yeah. you know? So when, uh, when we were kind of coming up with the idea, it was, it was birthed from the short film that I, idea that I had where I was going to try to trick the audience to thinking they were watching a feature and then the person dies and then it was actually a short. Yeah. Um, and then my manager's like, no, don't, don't do that. Like you'll, you'll piss a lot of people off. So why not make something that really is just you, you know? And Everly was hatched 17 days later, and we kind of went to the races with that. Salma came to us, um, so it wasn't written for her. It was like at all. Like we we had a long list of people, and what were like the top two choices. Besides? Um, well, at one, um, I always loved um, Michelle Monaghan. Okay, yeah. And, and part of the reason why, like Michelle Monaghan and like Kate Hudson, who we actually did cast. Oh, wow. The the original idea was to take the girl next door and and run her through the ringer okay. you know just so that you can see like oh she she used to be so sweet and then now she's you know like she's been you know put into an emotional torture chamber and now she's got to rise from the ashes um so on a on a kind of um on a surface level when you go kate hudson shotguns cool you know and we shot a promo with her we shot a poster with her we took it to berlin everybody was like totally in and then she dropped out to do glee all right, well, no big deal. Selma came to us, and she was like, baby, I want to do this script. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, 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 we will do this script with you. She, she brought so much, and, and the thing is, she, uh, she didn't really look at any of the action. It wasn't about the action for her. It was the survival story. It was, yeah, it was it's, the story with the, the family. You know, yeah. That was what was important with her. Of course, you know, it was all there and I wrote it and everything, but at the time I'm going like big explosions and crazy, you know, crazy guns and machine guns and entrails. It's going to be nuts. And she's like, yeah, but what about the emotional part? And I go, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're right. You know? And she, she hammered that home and thank God she did. Yeah. It, I mean, it was, I mean, like I said, it was, it was so good. Um, I've, I've followed your, um, your career. I, I love Chillerama. I love Hollis and I've reviewed those. I mean, damn, I love Thank them. You. Um, so as a horror filmmaker myself to you, really? yes. Um, I went to school from, went to Kansas and everything. Uh, How's the, pro- pro- uh, the program? It's the largest film studios between Chicago and Dallas. So That's I went, yeah. And it's really? cheaper than to go out of state cause I'm in Texas than to go in state. That's crazy. It's great. called old father studios. Good to know. Um, but, uh, it's really cool. So I won't always want to know what are some of your favorite scenes from movies that have, uh, helped you that you've always remembered from a kid that have stuck with you. Um, okay. Uh, God, it's too many. Uh, all right. One of them would be the experience that I had watching, uh, Chuck Russell's the blob. That was the movie. And I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever heard our podcast before, but I've talked about this before where um, when I saw that movie, up until that point, I wanted to be Tom Savini. I wanted to be a makeup artist and slash an actor. You yeah, know? he's one of the coolest. Uh, exactly, right? <laughs> it's Tom Savini. Um, but when I saw the remake of The Blob, I saw it opening day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on opening day. And it was actually a, it was a pretty packed house. 
And I was sitting in the back with my mom. My mom was like my best movie going buddy. She, she was a big horror movie fan. So we, we would go see these movies together. My whole family were big horror movie fans. And we watched the movie and I've never seen a movie with that had such a crazy audience response like that because it's funny and it's shocking. Spoiler alert, the hero of the movie, Donovan Leach, dies 30 minutes into the movie, <laughs> leaving us only with Johnny Drama to yep. kind of ra- and his mullet to round things out. Yeah, when he was really young. And it's <laughs> it's a great entertaining movie, but it's also extremely scary and extremely funny. And the the moment when uh, I don't know if you remember it, but uh, there's a scene where uh, the waitress gets trapped in the telephone booth, and she's trying to call the cop. And then as she does, the blob kind of reveals to her not just the face of this dude, but the tin star at the same time, yeah. and the audience went crazy and I that was the moment that I went all right whoever orchestrates this whole thing from the shooting to the actors to the cutting to the music what whatever that is I guess it's the director right the director okay I want to do that because if I can ever elicit a, a visceral response from an audience like they did right now I'm in you know yeah. and then one of the other ones really quick uh would be the hallway scene in exorcist 3 oh yes that's a, you know which one oh, yeah, you know yeah. which one like i saw that movie i had to sneak into that theater to go see it my mom went to go see ghost of course and she snuck me into exorcist 3 packed house and that scene comes on i was by myself and when the big jump happens someone came, grabbed me from behind and like like that and I shot up into the air and I turn around and there's this old woman there and I'm like why did you touch me and she's like I had no one else to hold on to <laughs> so you grab a 12 year old kid thanks thanks a lot lady it, it, well, it, it made an impact <laughs> yes it did absolutely well thanks so much for talking to me um, this That's was great it. I love this it. it this was it we gotta too go short. too short too short we have too much to talk about yes, we do.